Hello and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. I hope you're all keeping well and safe and looking after yourselves. And uh, here we are. We're still installing the third rail. And uh, I was amazed at the amount of response I've had in the last video regarding installing the third rail. And I do appreciate all comments positive negative or indifference because it helps me know if I'm going wrong or if it helps me to improve what I have done so far right right here's where we've got on stage on platform one um, now I wasn't sure whether the third wheel continued right through the points and all the way to the end of the line back here. Now here we have a water tower going in this area here and there's a water crane here. Now that with the third rail being live continuously, as I've found out through a, a comment in the last video, um, should the rail continue all the way through? Now then, I have just found a photograph which is very, very interesting. I'm just Here is the photograph, and you probably recognise that view. But there's the Riverside Bridge in the background, and there's the planking on the platform. And here we have the third rail, here and here, and across the tracks here and here. But the amazing thing is, we have a steam engine taken on water in the background there. So what I'll do is I'll zoom this photograph as best as I can without distorting the detail so we can have a closer look. As you can see there's a third rail there and it stops way way before the water crane. There's a third rail a little piece here on this side which stops way before the water cranks. What I'm getting at here is water and electricity do not mix. That's why I was holding an R in whether to continue the third rail to the end on platform one. So now I've seen this photograph I can safely say we can do because the third rail is on the right hand side here and it goes right round, you can actually see it in the shadow of the locomotive there so I'm glad I found this photograph because it shows you what um, was happening in the 1930s, 40s, 50s right up to the 1960s I have roughly placed the camera in the same position as it was on the photograph because you can see the wooden planking here you can just make out the bridge in the background and you can see the three tracks all right the tracks are slightly different in arrangement so in this video we're going to continue putting in the third rail I will add the water crane which is going to go here we'll come on to that in a minute because uh, I have a kit and what I'm going to do is continue the third reel and stop it a good 50 mil or 100 mil before it reaches the crane and then continue it after the crane and here's the kit I'm going to be using for the water crane it's a PD Marsh it's catalogue number PW203 double gauge Midland Railway water crane 
Alright, it's not a northeastern one, but if you look at the photograph, there is a swan neck in the arm of the crane. And uh, once I get it out of the packet, I might be able to manipulate it even more with it being made of tin lead. I think I have set myself a challenge um, to make a replica northeastern um, water crane. Um, I'm going to modify the Midland water crane that I've got to reshape the spout um, to make it similar to what's in that photograph. Right here we are at the bench and I've had a little accident with the crane. As you can see I have soldered it back on after I tried to profile it by bending it but all it does is snaps so if I'm gonna make this one look like the one in the photograph I'm gonna to have to do something really drastic okay as you can see there are a few little differences um, but I've used this water crane to get the dimensions from the ground and to, to where the neck is for the actual hose that goes into the tanks for filling up the locomotives but as you can see I've added other details as well like on the end there it's like a pan and there's a ball that's got to go on the top so that's the shape I'm after now I'm just going to work out roughly where I need to cut this so just roughly about there and there they're the first two important cuts and then we shall shape the actual swan neck to suit the pattern so here we go there's no turning back now so I'm just going to cut that off there and cut this bit off there So that's what we're left with and somehow I've got to reconfigure this whole arm to join back up in that position. Probably wondering how I'm going to do uh, the actual swan neck to fit that shape. Well I've got a rod, I've got some solder wires, what I'm going to do I'm going to wrap the soldering wire around this rod nice and tight push it firmly together nice and tight and I am hoping that this soldering wire is the right uh, dimension so just keeping it together nice and tight until I've got enough length of solder and wire to do the swan neck. Keep wrapping it around the rod until I've got at least 50 millimeters worth and then we can have a closer look at it bit like knitting this right so now I shall take it off the rod right so I've taken it off the rod it's left me that. Let's just see if it's the same diameter as the... Well, it's almost the same diameter. Could get away with it. 
Mind you, it's going to be melted yet, so I might lose a little bit on the diameter as I melt it. So, I'm going to preform the shape now. Okay, I have preformed the shape um, to our original plan. So it's just a case now of just gently touching it in a few places to hold it in place while we smother the whole lot a little bit at a time with solder and wire. Basically I'm just going to dip the joint on the crane in the flux and hopefully this will work. And then just gently touch it. Right, got my solder and iron, a little bit of solder on the tip, and just gently touch it. There you go, the first tack. Um, to hold it in place. What I'll do is, we've got a little bit of a void on this side and that's got to be filled in. So what I'll do is, I've got a, it's a little bit off center at the minute so I've got to twist it to get it centralized. And then try and fill that hole up. A bit of flux on the end, just going to put a little bit on there. Okay, that's just enough to, to hold that in place as you can see. Now I can manipulate the whole thing. It's very very springy as you can see it's just bouncing all over the place. So I'm going to have to stiffen it up a little bit by just by putting odd tacks here and there. So here we go we're just going to st stiffen it up in a few places. All I'm doing is just resting the solder and iron very, very gently on there. Just so it barely touches. It's still a little bit springy, but how it's working. Okay once you've got a few um, tacks in place you can actually begin to get the solder iron and just smooth it out very very gently but uh, I must warn you that this gets hot really really quickly uh, at the moment it's, it's only lukewarm at the minute so uh, I have had it come apart in a couple of places and then quickly soldered it back together again it does seem to be working. So I shall continue a bit more and see if I can curve this end up a little bit more because it's a little bit haphazard here where it's come apart. Let's put a couple more tacks in there just to keep it together. As you can see I'm only just touching it gently. And while you're doing this, just make sure you're in a ventilated room, if you haven't got both. Go extraction. doing it just smoothing it out now. Right, 
right so all I'm doing now is just getting rid of the spring just by adding the solder and just gently gently melting it into the arm As you can see, I have now got the basic shape. Um, it looks uh, a little bit lumpy, but once I get me files on it and start filing the edges and get it smooth, it'll be okay. And here is the pattern. So it's almost where it should be. Right, just got to file it down and take uh, a little bit off of the um, thickness and get it get the edges nice and smooth right now that's all, all cleaned up um, I use the Dremel to finish it off um, it's not too far off the pattern as you can see so there's only a couple of jobs left to do now I've got to create some sort of pan head here reattach the hose onto here and try and make a ball to go on top of there um, to get it looking like the one in the photograph so as you can see I've got a ring of solder wire on there now so I'm just going to try and just gently gently dab the solder onto it try and touch it just to tack it on there and then just fill in the rest then I can shape it with the Dremel and the file how I want it. Let's try and get the silicon to play ball. Not silicon, the solder to play ball. It seems to be working, just gently easing it round till it flows. There you go. So I've just got to fill in that little bit there on the corner. Which is not going to be easy because there's a little bit of flux in the way. There you go, it's in. Just flattening it out a little bit now. See, it's getting really hot. So I have moulded a pan which I've got to take off with a Dremel later and I managed to get a ball on top of um, the, the actual stack of the frame there so there's only one thing left to do and that's to attach the actual water hose. So I don't know if it's going to go back on. Very delicate this little bit. Right, 
Hey, that's it. Just, just got to gently solder that round, and that's it. It's on. Happy days. Right, just got to degrease it now. Clean up the pan. Somehow turn that blob into a ball if I can. And um, clean it up. Okay, that finishes that bit. Okay, that's that uh, finished now. Um, so I think I'll leave it as it is. I'm quite happy with the way the swan neck has turned out. And the, the actual pan, if you like, on the end. And the finial on the top. So I'll keep all that. Um, I'm not going to change the main column itself. I think I'll leave that as it is. So all I've got to do now is just clean off all the flux and grime where I've been um, cleaning it up. And um, that'll be ready for painting. So I'll just use some thinners or, uh, to clean that up. Right, so in the meantime I have found some white metal bases. I think this was off a stop kit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer all these bits on this original PD Marsh plate onto this stone plate. Not only will it give me a thicker base for the, the water crane, but it'll give me an enhanced look with these slabs. So that's the next job. I've already pre-drilled it, as you can see, I've already pre-drilled the holes. So it's just a case of cutting this piece out, cutting that piece out, and either soldering them or gluing them onto the new base. So, Okay, as you can see, I've glued all the um, components on to the um, paving, if you like. And, um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I've actually highlighted these these slabs and the actual drain cover there um, because it was starting to to fade with me handling it um, so if I thought well if I highlight it now um, while I can before I start before I clean it up so um, the hole is a bit messy there I don't know if you can see that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to run a drill and just clean it out a little bit. Because <laughs> that's the actual drain where the spillage of water would run through. So I've cleaned that out, so that's ready for cleaning. And um, we can put it together then. Right, I uh, finally put it all together. Um, in the end, I had to melt down the stems that came through the base with a solder iron and try and blend them in on the actual um, column and on the little valve as well. 
So now that that's done, I've given it a little clean again. Make sure I've got rid of any flux. And that's ready for painting now. Hey, I have painted the stonework with a base colour matte 148 uh, Humbrol paint. That's just to give me a base coat for sandstone and they will end up discoloured and blackened but that's just to give me the base coat and I've painted halfway up the column black and a little bit on the little valve there black and the next bit I'm going to do, I'm going to do this top section here along with the pan um, a red colour then I'm going to paint the swan neck a metallic silver and then a red um, paint for the fitting and then black matte for the actual flexi hose. Right, I have now painted the top of the column in red and the little fitting around the top there in red and also the valve um, I've done that in red as well, except for the handle. Um, I've also touched up the slabs using a dark grey and matte 67 humble paint. And um, so there's only a couple of things left to do now. That's the hose and the swan neck. So I'll leave that to dry for a little while. Right, here we are. The crane is now in position between the two tracks and there's plenty of room um, to get any rolling stock either side so it shouldn't clash um, regards finishing it has been weathered and uh, I'm quite pleased with the way it's turned out especially the, the stones there on the bottom but it still looks quick, squeaky clean to me. So I want to just put this in so when the PVA goes off I'll probably darken them down a bit more. Especially the new stones around the paving slabs. Right, um, ah yes, the third rail. I have taken your comments on board and darkened them down um, because the carbon dust that would have come off the rails would have stuck to the side of the rails if that makes sense. So all the third rails for the station is complete as well. So I've done managed to do that this week. All I'm doing now is just adding some finishing touches to the crane. Um, basically, I'm just adding droplets of um, clear varnish into the grooves of the sleepers to represent water. So I'm just filling up where water has been spilt in between the sleepers. Um, I'm using a humble gloss so that's more or less a varnish and as you can see it looks like the real thing so I'm just going to put it just in a few places because I don't want to overdo it but it's just to give the effect that the ground is actually wet What you do, you just let it soak in to the top of the sleepers. And I'll go around with a cotton bud in a minute and to wipe a little bit off the sleepers so it's not like it's overflowing. If that makes sense. It's just where it's been spilt.
Right, so now the cotton bud, I'll just take a little bit off the sleeper. It will still leave a shine on the sleeper, but it won't look bulbous. Is bulbous a word? Well, you know what I mean. So if I lift the camera up, you may get a better view, I'm not sure. There you go. Right, I think that's all from me. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And um, keep safe and keep modelling. Bye for now. Bye.